What's up guys, how's it going? Alex here with this Cobb House. And in this video, I'm gonna read through the Cobb Research Institute's overview on the new Cobb Code Appendix. And I'm gonna leave a link down below to the full document. But in this video, I'm gonna read through the overview and kind of pick out the most um, pertinent points that I see and kind of summarize everything as basically as I can. Um, it might be a little dry, because I will just be reading through the document, but this is really important information if you're interested in applying the new Cobb code. So, to get started here, the Cobb Research Institute's Cobb Building Code was approved for the 2021 International Residential Code and is called Appendix U Cobb Construction Monolithic Adobe. So, what does this mean and what's next? The IRC is an ICC model building code used in 49 of the 50 U.S. states as a basis for their residential building code. The IRC applies to one and two family dwellings, their accessory structures, and townhouses. The 2021 IRC will be published by ICC in August 2020. State and local jurisdictions begin their triennial code adoption process at various dates after ICC publishes their model codes, and it's often a year or more before these codes take effect. The schedule and process for state and local adoption of the building codes varies greatly from state to state. So check with your local building department or the agency that oversees code adoption in your state. So when and how can I use the new Cobb Construction Appendix? The Cobb Construction Appendix U in the IRC was approved in the ICC code development process as part of the IRC model code. ICC model codes have great respect in the design and building industry and code community, but they have no legal standing of their own. So in order to be enforceable, they must be adopted by a governmental jurisdiction, usually a state, city, county, or tribal entity. Each appendix must be specifically adopted by the jurisdiction to be a part of its residential building code. So can I use the approved COP construction appendix now before adoption? Because as of now, um, most jurisdictions or states have probably not adopted this yet. Um, so this is quite relevant. Anyone can propose on a project basis to their local building official to use the ICC approved COP construction appendix U before adoption in their jurisdiction, including before it's published. However, waiting for its publication will increase the likelihood of acceptance because only then will the appendix appear as an integrated ICC document. Until then, ICC does, not, or does show the approved Cobb Appendix U in one document, in one document, but as two pieces, the original proposal and its approved public comment revisions. Proposed use of the ICC approved Cobb Code Appendix U before its adoption, whether before or after publication, would be done under the Alternative Materials and Methods section in the IRC. In this process, the building official has the discretion to approve materials and methods not specifically prescribed by the building code if demonstrated that the alternative is at least equivalent of that prescribed. Prior to the recent approval of Appendix U, the Cobb Building Code, this process has been arduous and expensive with uncertain results. The newly approved IRC Appendix U, even if not adopted by a jurisdiction, will likely make the process much easier. Key things to know about IRC Cobb Appendix. The IRC Cobb Appendix U states at its beginning, buildings using Cobb walls shall comply with this code except as otherwise stated in this appendix. This means everything except the Cobb walls and interfaces at their top and bottom and connections to doors and windows must comply with the body of the IRC. So foundations, floors, roofs, doors, windows, electrical plumbing, mechanical and energy conservation must all comply with those provisions in the IRC unless alternatives are approved by the building official through section um, with the alternative materials and methods request. Complying with the energy conservation requirements of the IRC is challenging for Cobb walls. Um, 
I'll be getting into this more with solutions, how to efficiently insulate cob walls. But here's what they say, a building's thermal performance depends on both the mass and the thermal resistance of its thermal envelope in context of the local climate. Energy codes take all these into account. Cob walls have high thermal mass, but low thermal resistance, or low insulation value. Most energy codes consider a cob wall a mass wall, like concrete block, brick, or rammed earth. And this reduces the thermal resistance requirement in all climate zones, especially in warm climates, which is good. Um, but even in warm climates, it's difficult for cob walls to comply without adding some type of insulation. Super insulating other elements such as the roof or ceiling might help facilitate compliance. A project called Cobbage at the University of Plymouth, England has been experimenting with walls made of an inner core of structural cob surrounded by an insulating layer as clay, um, an insulating layer such as clay straw or clay hemp. And this Cobbage system is really excellent and I'll be showing you guys how this system works pretty shortly. Cob walls with straw only reinforcing are possible with Appendix U in regions of low seismic risk. So um, straw only reinforcing, that's the traditional way of adding the tensile strength into the cob walls. Um, so in what the IRC calls seismic design categories A and B, which encompass about 80% of continental United States, um, you can do the traditional straw only reinforcing. Steel reinforcing is required for cob walls in seismic design categories C, D, and E, and an engineered design is required in categories D and E. Um, those categories are found mostly in western states, but also around St. Louis and in eastern Tennessee and coastal South Carolina. And I've got another video I did a couple months ago on specifically talking about the seismic zones and the different reinforcing types that you can apply to your cob walls and whether you need to get an engineered design or not. Next point here, there's no fire resistance rating assigned to cob walls in the IRC cob appendix U because the IRC required ASTM fire test has not been conducted yet. This is in spite of COP's known high resistance to fire from tests of related earth wall systems like Adobe and compressed earth block and its performance in wildfires and ad hoc tests. Future ASTM testing of COP walls is planned. In the meantime, the only practical limitation of no fire rating is that exterior COP walls cannot be closer than 5 feet to a property line where a 1 hour fire resistance rating is required. So despite the uh, fire tests not being conducted yet, it's really not putting much of a limitation on cob construction. Building with or without a cob code, it's apparent that some people will still prefer to build with cob without a building permit. The existence of Appendix U, this new cob building code, does nothing to prevent this. So um, I just want to make this clear, and the Cobb Research Institute also wants to make this clear that just because we have this new code, it doesn't prevent anyone from being able to construct a cob structure the way we've been doing it in the past decades. Um, because most cob structures the past decades have not been permitted. You can still go this route, but now we have the option. You can either go that route or now you can go the route with the code. So it's not preventing anything, it's just opening up more opportunities and possibilities. So will building with a permit and Appendix U be more expensive? The cost of a permitted COP structure will increase due to required permit drawings and permit costs, um, unless you can do the permit drawings yourself. Um, that'll save you money there. Uh, permit costs vary greatly by jurisdiction, typically based on the cost of construction. Costs may also increase because of requirements in the Appendix U. Um, for example, you might have to put reinforcing in your walls, which could increase the cost. Um, requirements in Appendix U, the designer or builder would not otherwise choose. The cost of an architect or engineer is not required when the design follows the provisions in Appendix U. 
So you don't necessarily need to hire an architect or an engineer, um, which is excellent. However, an engineer is required in the high seismic design categories D and E, which I talk about in a separate video. That's mostly places on the West Coast. Um, there's a spot in South Carolina on the coast, um, some areas in the mountains of East Tennessee and Western North Carolina around the Smokies, um, around St. Louis, a couple areas on the East Coast, but mostly looking at the West Coast as far as the seismic zones that require an engineered design. The significant benefits of these increased costs include confidence in the safety and durability of the permitted and inspected structure, the ability to insure or finance COB projects, that's pretty big, and the ability to sell a property without needing to disclose an unpermitted COB structure. This is huge. Um, if you're trying to do real estate with COB structures, you need to follow the code, I recommend. And this is excellent. Now we have a code. This is great. Um, and freedom from worry about an unpermitted cop structure being discovered and forced to be removed. The role of building officials and regulations. Many people have had a negative experience with or negative perception of government officials or regulations. Though imperfect, these officials and regulations are intended to serve the public health and safety. CRI encourages everyone to think of and interact with building officials as part of their community and as an ally, not an adversary. And I agree. Ask questions and stand firm if you feel an official or regulation overreaches, but cooperation usually yields the best outcome for everyone. Next point, building without a permit and code. During the development of Cobb Research Institute's Cobb Code proposal, some members of the Cobb building community expressed concerns that a Cobb code would make it impossible for people to build with Cobb without permits. The new Cobb code will not prevent a continuation of the no-code practices of the past three decades. So you can continue to build the way people have been building sort of under the radar or um, finding the loopholes. You can continue to do that. The new code doesn't prevent any of that. So even if you choose to build a Cobb building without a permit, the Cobb Research Institute hopes Appendix U can be useful to you. Though it's not a how-to guide, it includes requirements for building safe, safely based on extensive structural testing. Everyone wants their building to be safe. The appendix provides research-based quantifiable and performance guidelines for what until now has been often based on guesswork. Which is true. So as they say here in summary, there are practical downsides to building with permits and codes in terms of cost, time, and effort. However, it's the Cobb Research Institute's position that the benefits of a Cobb building code in terms of safety, legality, and societal appreciation and acceptance <clears throat> far outweigh any downsides in the both short and long term. So this is excellent. <clears throat> I'll leave a link down below to the document on this and all the information on the code. You can download the entire um, Cobb code appendix U on the Cobb Research Institute's website. Um, this information is really important if you want to build according to code and get your building permitted. And um, I totally um, support this code and I'm going to be teaching more about the entire um, new Appendix U in the near future. So um, I hope you got some good information out of this. I know it's a little bit monotonous just listening to me read this, but um, I need to try and help get this information out there. So um, yeah, if you have any interest in building a Cobb home, read the code, subscribe to this channel, hit the notification bell, and um, like this video too if you got some value out of it. And um, I'll be making more videos on this topic shortly. I'll be showing you guys more visually um, with 3D models how you're going to construct and design these buildings according to the code. Like for example with the um, seismic zone structural reinforcing, I'll break down how you would design those and also how you would build those. Um, and then all the other sections of the code I'll break down for you. So. 
Um, thanks for listening, and I'll talk to you all in the next video.